Hey girlies and welcome back to the pod. Today we are talking all about books. So my favorite topic, obviously, and we're chatting all about my most anticipated 2022 book recommendations. So books that are coming out this year that I'm super excited about and also just some good books to read in the winter, all snow related, a little creepy kind of books that I've consider I guess cozy if that makes sense if you can consider a book cozy you know what I mean um but yeah and if you're wondering Carmen why do you sound a little funky well (laughs) well that is because I have laryngitis currently recovering I'm on day three of my z-pack which is like an antibiotic thing I think some pill I don't know but earlier this week I literally could not speak I genuinely couldn't speak. I sounded like a prepubescent teenage boy, and now I just kind of sound congested, and I really wanted to record on Thursday, but I literally couldn't speak all day on Thursday, and I was like, okay, no, I'll record on Friday. It gets Friday. I can't speak without coughing in every other sentence. I don't know what it was, but it was like to speak was using too much oxygen, Um, I have asthma. Anyway, so fun. So we'll see how far I can make it into this without coughing. Um, But you probably won't know because obviously I'll edit it out, but that'll be so much fun for me. Anyway, um, I'm feeling better. I did have laryngitis, kind of still have it. Um, It's like a throat thing. I don't know what it's caused by. People have asked me that. They're like, what did you get it from? I don't know. I don't know. Just one day I was at a basketball game. And I guess I was talking loudly, and when I was at the game, I was struggling to, like, speak above the noise, right? And I was like, oh, I'm just probably losing my voice. Yes. Yes, I did, in fact, lose my voice. I could not speak. I had to go to school one day where I couldn't speak all day, and that might have been the hardest thing I've ever done. Because, of course, I love to talk. I love to share my opinion. And some people are stupid. And when no one talks in a class, it's so awkward, so I'll answer but I would just sound so bad. Everyone would just give me weird looks. And I swear everyone thought I had COVID, which TBH, I thought I had COVID earlier this week, but I got tested and I didn't. Um, but I just felt so bad. So I've literally been sick for a week with laryngitis and something else. We don't know. Not COVID. I don't think it's flu because I didn't have a fever. So pretty much just have felt physically awful for a week straight, which has been, oh my god, so fun. Happy New Year, right? Um, Especially when it's the first week back to school. So great, so great. But anyway, I'm feeling better today, so that's good. Um, But yeah, I know a lot of people though, a lot of my friends have COVID and a lot of my friends are just sick. It seems like everyone's just kind of sick right now, including me. But if you... If you're sick or if you think you might be sick, get tested for COVID, get tested for flu, strep, whatever. Um, My dad's a doctor, so he kind of self-diagnosed me at home. And I always tell people, like, I don't go to the doctor's office and everyone's like, oh my god, the fuck. But it's just because my dad's a doctor. So if I really need to go to the office, I'll go to his office and then I just, I don't have real appointments. So pretty much like in adult life when I actually have to go to the doctor that's gonna be first time experience right which is kind of funny but I don't know it's kind of nice though not having to go to the doctor and then I can actually get medicine without it getting really bad even though I literally couldn't speak and then I was like dad um I can't speak and I can't breathe and I'm coughing a lot and I feel like I'm about to vomit anyway doing well so good hope you guys aren't sick but if you are um feel better. Also, this week I had a snow day, which was fun, but my school literally had a half snow day. It started snowing at like 10 a.m. and we were all like, please just let us go home. All the public schools were out. We're like, please just let us go home. We don't want to drive. And they were like, no, no, we're going to let you go at one. Okay. At 1 p.m., there were, there was at least mm, five inches of snow on the ground. My car was buried. There were only three cars left in the parking lot when I got to my car, and I had to wipe the snow off, and my hands have never been so cold, and it took me an hour to drive home when it would normally take 20 minutes because people were driving literally two miles per hour. 
And yes, I understand. It's snowing. You want to go slow. But why that slow? Why that slow? Okay. And it was my first time driving in snow too. And it literally took me an hour to get home. And it was so awful. And my school should have had a snow day and everyone was so pissed. And then on Friday, we had a real snow day. And the roads aren't even bad that day, which didn't really make sense. Um, But anyway, fun times. Loving life. Uh, today I finished a book. It's called Get the Fuck Out of the Sun by Lauren Boswick. Bostick? Boswick? I don't really know how to say her last name, but she has a podcast. Um, I cannot remember what it's called. It's like him and her, his and her. I don't know. Something like that with her husband, but her book is so good and she's so funny and it's about skincare, which of course, love that. Love a good skincare routine. So, I started trying to take my skin more seriously because I feel like I've always been someone who does take my skin seriously. Recently, I've been slacking. Um, I've just been using a few things and my skin really hasn't been feeling better. So I looked in my bathroom closet and I found some stuff that people have sent me. So I started using that and 10 out of 10, I feel so good and I feel so put together. I'm literally... I used vitamin C serum this morning. I feel so bougie. And then I also used um, a sunscreen that's also a skin tint this morning. So bougie. Like, I feel so good. Um, Next step is my hair, though, because that is a major struggle. Not looking too good. But anyway, 10 out of 10 recommend this book if you're interested in skincare and how you can improve your skincare routine. And overall, just if you're interested in skin, it was pretty good, pretty interesting. And then also this week, I watched the entire new series, oh my god, not series, new season of Queer Eye, and it was so good. Literally, I watched everything, and every episode made me cry. I don't know if I was just really emotional this week because I was sick and felt like I was dying or what, but it's so good. So if you haven't seen that, definitely do. It's very... um it called like motivational inspirational and they're always helping people that are like good in their communities and I was like oh I want my dad to go in queer eye you know because he's he's such a cutie patootie anyway um 10 out of 10 recommend if you haven't seen that and then also my family did uh Christmas this past Sunday aka the day when I started to feel sick so that was fun yep And I got these affirmation cards for Christmas. They're called I Am Everything Affirmation Card Deck, and they have 30 cards. And I wanted to read one of them to you guys just because it's super cute, and I thought it'd be fun to, like, kind of start the episode with something cute and happy and positive besides me talking about laryngitis for 10 minutes because I don't think anyone really cares. Um... But I got the these cards. I actually put it, if you listen to my Christmas episode, or it was like wish my Christmas wish list, birthday wish list, whatever. I talked about these and then my older brother got them for me for Christmas. And they're really cute because they have them numbered 1 through 30. So you could read one every day, like for 30 days, if you want to kind of get back to feeling good. Or you can kind of shuffle all the cards and pull one out whenever But I'm just going to do the first card because I thought it'd be fun to start a podcast episode with a positive affirmation because that's what it's all about and it's fun. So this one says, I am love. I may not have always made the right choices, but I did my best. I have so much to love. Oh my God. Wow. I really cannot speak today. Okay. This is going to be a struggle. I also cannot read, which is funny because I'm going to have to read like a lot of things for this episode. Love life. Doing so good. Okay. I have so much love to give and everyone around me can feel it. I'm given a clean slate every single day to be the best best version of me that I can be. I am forgiven. I am love. And the cards are so cute. They have um, the affirmation on one side and then a really pretty gradient on the other side and they look just very calming. It's really cute and I'm keeping them on my desk. And also, if you're on YouTube or if you're watching Spotify video because apparently now that's a thing, which is really cool. A bunch of people were DMing me about it. They're like, Carmen, where is your Spotify video? And I was like, girl, what are you talking about? But then I figured it out, okay? And I did it, guys. I did it. So if you're listening on Spotify, 
Spotify video, okay? You can look at me and my gorgeous face and have the best time. Um, but behind me, if you're watching on video, I have three books back here, two of which I got for Christmas. One's about imposter syndrome. Another one is about feminism. The last one is the skincare book I was talking about, but they all look super cute, so I thought I would put them up just because sometimes my background is lacking, I feel like. Um, that's because this is literally in the corner of my room, but whatever. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online counseling service that is affordable and accessible for everyone. It is not a crisis line or self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. Their platform will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you can even start communicating in under 48 hours. The counselors are easily accessible, and you can send them a message at any time along with scheduling weekly video or phone sessions. If you are someone who has been interested in getting help with depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, family conflicts, or more, then BetterHelp is a great alternative to traditional offline therapy. BetterHelp is also more affordable, and financial aid is available to make their services available to clients worldwide. As always, I want you to start living your best and happiest life, so as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash girlygirl. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash girlygirl. So today, we are talking all about books. Fun books you can read in winter, so when it's really cold, it's snowing outside. Personally, for winter, I'm more of a creepy kind of book girl, or also books that are kind of focused in wintry settings, but mostly creepy books, I guess. Um, So we're going to start out with books that I've read the past few months that I think just fit perfect winter vibe that we're honestly pretty good. And then also later on in the episode, we'll be chatting all about my most anticipated books for 2022, which if you have Goodreads, you can mark as want to read on your phone. I have Goodreads. You can follow me. If you ever need book recommendations, literally just look at the books that I've read or that I've given five stars. I feel like I'm very nice when I give ratings to books. Like most of the books I give or I read, I give five stars because I'm like, why would I continue reading a book if I don't like it, you know? But recently, um, I feel like I've been a bit mean on books and it might not, it might just be cut. Oh my gosh. Wow. I truly am struggling today. I was telling my friend this yesterday, but I've been forgetting stuff (laughs) recently. Just, I don't know if it's because I'm sick, but I, I just can't form complete thoughts or I'll forget what I'm doing more than I normally would or um this morning I was trying to write a to-do list and I was writing it so fast because I could feel myself forgetting it um so if I lose my train of thought I'm sorry I'm (laughs) struggling today but you know we're here I was really debating just not posting an episode today just because I was like, I felt so terrible this week. I need a break. But, you know, can't do that. Uh, Maybe, maybe in the near future, maybe in the near future, feeling hashtag burnt out, if you feel me. Maybe I'll do an episode on burnout soon because recently I've been feeling it in literally everything in life, school, like senioritis hit, like I really just don't care. I've had less than a full week of school and I'm already done uh, podcast stuff, just reading, going back to reading because that's what I was talking about. But I feel like I've been giving bad ratings to books just because they've been taking me longer to read because I haven't been finding motivation to keep reading it. And then when it takes me longer to read a book, I end up kind of forgetting stuff and not really feeling like I actually enjoyed it, even if it was a good book, even if the writing was good. Um... So if you look at my Goodreads and you notice that some of the books I recommended, I didn't necessarily rate the highest. It's because it took me long to read. Specifically speaking about this first one, my older sister um, told me to read this one. She read it over Thanksgiving when we went on vacation. But it's called Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. 
think that's how you say her last name and it is 297 pages so fairly short and it definitely does pack a punch it's a lot going on it's uh very twisty turny um this is a book i did in fact give three stars but here's the thing it's not necessarily because it was a bad book the writing was good how she tied everything together was good it's just at the moment for me I was looking more for some trashy romance thing, so I wasn't really in the mood to read this, you know, but it actually was a good book. I was just, like, not in a good mood when I was reading it, so if you look at my good reads, don't be like, I'm not going to read this because Carmen gave it three stars. No, read it because I swear it was actually good. Okay, but here is the description of Rock, Paper, Scissors. Think you know the person you married? Think again. Things have always been wrong with Mr. and Mrs. Wright for a long time. When Adam and Amelia went a weekend away to Scotland, it might be just what their marriage needs. Self-confessed workaholic and screenwriter Adam Wright has lived with face blindness his whole life. He can't recognize friends or family or even his own wife. Every anniversary, the couple exchange exchanges traditional gifts paper, cotton, pottery, tin, and each year Adam's wife writes him a letter that she never lets him read, until now. They both know this weekend will make or break their marriage, but they didn't randomly win this trip. One of them is lying, and someone doesn't want them to live happily ever after. Ten years of marriage, ten years of secret, and an anniversary they will never forget. So, we have pretty much two main characters, broken marriage, They both kind of low-key are starting to resent each other and hate each other, and they are pretty much get trapped up in Scotland. There's a big snowstorm, so wintry vibe. They're pretty much trapped in this um, cathedral that was turned into a house, and they're trapped because there's a giant snowstorm they can't leave, and it forces them to face their issues and their marriage, and um, just some things coming up from their past. But the way that the author kind of wove everything together was really interesting. Honestly, it was a lot for my sick brain to understand. Maybe that's why I didn't read it so high, but just because I literally, I swear, I cannot think this week. I don't know what's wrong with me, but it was a lot for me to comprehend. So I feel like if I was not sick and normal, I'd be like, oh my gosh, genius. But really, I was just sitting there and I was like, what is happening? But it it does make sense looking back at it now that I've digested what actually happened but it's very interesting uh 10 out of 10 recommend definitely super creepy i would call consider it a psychological thriller it's one of those books where you're like i don't necessarily know if i want to read this before i go to bed but then you do and it's fine because it's good and you keep reading it right and it's short so you can read it really quickly um and then the next book that i want to suggest is also a psychological thriller um, I would say pretty similar, but I read this one first. And having read this one first, I honestly liked it better. But I think if I had read Rock, Paper, Scissors first, I would have liked that one better. But I just read this one first and I was like, oh my god, so good. Because my friend told me to read it and I did. And I was like, wow, so good. It's called Verity by Colleen Hoover. And it was the first Colleen Hoover book that I read. I think I've talked about it one time on the podcast maybe because I was so obsessed with it when I read it and it is 336 pages so a little bit longer but again not that long and it is about an author who gets this amazing opportunity to co-write a book with this famous author in her genre but the thing is um turns out not everything is as it seems and um things start to go down secrets revealed and i'm just gonna read the description because i don't want to give stuff away but lowen ashley is a struggling writer on the brink of financial ruin when she accepts the job offer of a lifetime jeremy crawford husband of best-selling author verity crawford has hired lowen to complete the remaining books in a successful series his injured wife is unable to finish Lowen arrives at the Crawford home, ready to sort through years of Verity's notes and outlines, hoping to find enough material to get her started. What Lowen doesn't expect to uncover is the chaotic office. Oh, oh my gosh. Again, I 
can't read today. Sorry about it. What Lomic doesn't expect to uncover in the chaotic office is an unfinished autobiography Verity never intended for anyone to read. Page after page of bone-chilling admissions, including Verity's recollection of what really happened the day her daughter died. Oh. Lowen decides to keep the manuscript hidden from Jeremy, knowing its contents would devastate the already grieving father. But as Lowen's feelings for Jeremy begin to intensify, she recognizes all the ways she could benefit if he were to read his wife's words. After all, no matter how devoted Jeremy is to his injured wife, a truth this horrifying would make it impossible for him to continue to love her. T. So, it's told from two perspectives. The first perspective is of Lowen, the struggling writer, and it's about her going through this woman's office and her living, pretty much living in the house with the injured author's husband. Um... And how they get along, and she's like, oh my god, so wrong, but also Jeremy, like, hey, right? And then the second perspective is of Verity, who is the injured wife slash author, and it's the perspective from her manuscript that Lowen finds in her office. She's pretty much detailing their, her entire life story, starting at the point of when she and Jeremy met and going through when they had their daughters, they had kids, her career, how it took off, and pretty much everything leading up to her accident, which is a car accident where she got physically and supposedly mentally injured. And you can just see it's very, very interesting. I guess both of these books is kind of funny because they're about bad marriages um, I swear my home life is fine, guys, but honestly, very interesting, super creepy. I don't know if this one is creepier than the last one that I recommended, but definitely I was sitting there just thinking, oh my gosh, this is sick, right? Because it just has the characters where you really want to hate them. Like every single character, you just think, oh my God, this person is horrible, But it's like they're a normal person, but they're just doing bad things and things that you know aren't right and that they shouldn't be doing. Um, And that's pretty much everyone. Everyone in this book is just doing something so wrong, but it isn't till the end that you figure out what. And that's kind of the same for Rock, Paper, Scissors. You kind of hate everyone in the book. And then at the end, you're like, okay, this all makes sense, but also I still hate everyone. And going back to Rock, Paper, Scissors, that is told from multiple perspectives. Um, It's told from Amelia, the wife, Adam, the husband, and then also from the um, letters that the wife sends her husband each year on their anniversary. And then there's also one more character who is later revealed to what they actually are in relation to the other two, which is really interesting. The next book on my winter books list is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, and it is 416 pages. And Stephanie Garber is also the author of Caraval, which is a very popular series. I read it, um, not necessarily my favorite just because of it had like a love triangle, which was annoying for me, but overall good series. Very interesting. Um, but this book, it has love. We have curses. It's all about happily ever after. It's kind of this whole fairy tale setting, but where the fairy tale goes wrong, which I think is really interesting. And it's kind of set in a wintry place, which is chef's kiss. Super cute. And it has just wintery vibes because they send the characters to this um, really cold country. And I'm just, I'm just going to read what it is because I don't know how to explain it without actually reading this. Evel- Evangeline? Evelyn? Evangeline? Y'all, I cannot pronounce people's names. I feel so bad. But any book character, I just make up my own pronunciation just so it makes it easier for me to read. But I feel like this is definitely not how you say this, but just just go with it. Okay. Evangeline Fox was raised in her beloved father's curiosity shop, 
but she grew up on legends about immortals, like the Prince of Hearts. She knows his powers are mythic, his kiss is worth dying for, and that bargains with him rarely end well. But when Evangeline learns that the love of her life is about to marry another, she becomes desperate enough to offer the Prince of Hearts whatever he wants in exchange for his help to stop the wedding. The prince only asks for three kisses, but after Evangeline's first promised kiss, she learns that the Prince of Hearts wants far more than she's pledged She's pledged for, and he has plans for Evangeline that will either end in the greatest happily ever after or the most exquisite tragedy, period. So if you read Caraval, you would recognize the Prince of Hearts. Prince of Hearts is in Caraval, and this story kind of relates to that. Um, it is set in the same world, and it does have some of the same characters, but it is set after Caraval. So if you've read that series, it would make sense, and it's interesting, but you don't have to read that series to understand this book, because the only character that really transfers over that has a main role is the Prince of Hearts, and it kind of makes sense for backstory about him. So if you want to hear backstory about him, um, read Caraval, but she also makes a lot of references to it, which kind of make it make more sense. Um, But again, you don't have to read Caraval to understand this, but this book might have been the most frustrating book I have ever read because you have the two characters and you want them to be together so badly, but you just know the entire time, like it doesn't make sense. They would never work out. But at the same time, I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't know because I feel like they should, right? And um, you just know that the Prince of Hearts is such a bad guy and he does all these horrible things. But you still kind of love him. Um, He was kind of like that in Caraval too. But he's just a really interesting character that I think it's just cool to see in his own series because he was more of a minor playing character in Caraval, so it's interesting to see him actually have his main role and just kind of be more present and it's just very interesting. Everything is very twisted. Um I really liked it. Fairy tale vibes, wintry kingdom vibes, super fun, super cute. Um betrayal trying to think of all the tropes betrayal forbidden love um fairy tale curses whatever um so good 10 out of 10 i was actually obsessed with this book when i was reading it though i was more frustrated but now looking back i'm like it was so good also the cover of it is just so beautiful and so wintry and so fun So even if you don't want to read it, just look it up so you can see the pretty cover of it. And people have made so many cute, like, fan art things. And I'm not someone who looks at fan art. But sometimes it shows up on my Instagram because I follow some of the authors and they'll post some of the fan art. And it's just, it's so cute, okay? It's so freaking adorable and cute. I love that book. 10 out of 10. So many wintry vibes. So cute. Slightly frustrating, but in the best possible way, right? Okay. The next book is, or was, probably my favorite book that I read in December, November, TBH, I don't know when I read this, but it is so good, and I can't wait for the second book. It is A Shadow in the Ember, and it is the first book in the Flesh and Fire series, which none of the other books are out yet, but I think it's going to be a trilogy, and that is by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Um, she wrote from blood and ash so if you've read that and you liked that you will you will love this i swear i loved from blood and ash that book was my shit okay so good love the series can't wait for the new book it's on it's actually on my list uh plot twist yeah just giving you a sneak peek the new book in the from blood and ash series i think it's the fourth one yep is on my list because i love her her writing so good just the world building, so good. The characters, so good. This book is a bit long. It is 712 pages, but it is so worth it. Okay. Loved every minute. So good. Um, And again, it is set in the From Blood and Ash world, and it kind of relates to some things about Blood and Ash. It's set in the past, though, 
and it relates to things about a prophecy that is talked more about, or a prophecy that comes to fruition in From Blood and Ash, but it's talking about from the past, and it's, if you've read From Blood and Ash, you know, there's, like, the main world where all the humans are, and then there's kind of this heaven-like world that I guess would be most related to for gods and primals, and primals are, like, higher than gods. They're, like, the the big boys, right? They're the most powerful things ever. And this is set in that world with the primals and the gods. And it's about the politics and that and also kind of the past, what people do leading up to the prophecy and how this actually affects the world in the future, which is super interesting. And it relates to From Blood and Ash, which is really cool because if you've read that, you're like, oh my god, I know about that, ha. Huh? But if you don't, it's fine. You can still read this without having read the other book. Okay, born shrouded in the veil of the primals, a maiden as the fates promised, Seraphina Morel's future has never been hers. Chosen before birth to uphold the desperate deal her ancestors struck to save his people, Sarah must leave behind her life and offer herself to the primal of death as his consort. However, Sarah's real destiny is most closely guarded is the most closely guarded secret in all of Lusana. She's not a well-protected maiden, but an assassin on one mission, one target. Make the primal of death fall in love, become his weakness, and then end him. If she fails, she dooms her kingdom to a slow demise at the hands of the rot. Sarah has always known what she is, chosen, consort, assassin, weapon. A specter never fully formed, yet drenched in blood, a monster, until him. Until the primal of death's unexpected words and deeds chase away the darkness gathering inside of her, and his sedu- seductive touch ignites a passion she's never allowed herself to feel and cannot feel for him. But Sarah has never had a choice. Either way, her life is forfeit. It always has been. And she has been forever touched by life and death. Mmm, girl, girl. This book is so spicy. It's so good. There's plot too, which so fun so unexpected but we love that so pretty much it's about um this girl she is in fact a princess uh they talk more about this so this isn't giving anything away but sarah is a princess but no one really knows about her because she's been chosen for the primal of death right and she has been trained all her life to be a man's greatest meekness become whatever they want she's been trained in all the arts of seduction um politics Anything you can imagine, weapon, weaponry, like killing people, how to kill things, I don't know. She's pretty much a jack of all trades. Like, she can do it all. She's a badass. She's very cool. And she's trying to save her land and her people from the rot, which is overtaking her entire country and causing political alliances to fail, causing her country to be isolated from others, because obviously no one wants to be with them because they can't provide food, they can't provide anything, and it is her job to save her nation. And the rot, it's pretty much turning the ground to be uninhabitable, it's killing everything in its path. I don't know how else to explain it. I'm trying to think of something that would make it related to something that's understandable. It's kind of like if the earth had a plague that killed everything and it's like that and she she has been taught that if she kills the primal of death that the rot will go away because the primal of death is the one that her ancestor made the deal with that would be protected from the rot blah 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 but she always knows this is a suicide mission but she has to do it anyway and it's about when they meet like how she feels um forbidden love I guess kind of being locked away, um, finding, I guess, like, enemies to lovers, kind of. I know a lot of books, though. It always has someone, it's like, an assassin is coming to kill the king, but they can't fall in love with the king, which is, like, so basic. Okay, whatever, so basic, but I love it. I really do. I do love this trope. Um, so 10 out of 10, recommend. Probably one of my favorite books that I read this past year, I think. I don't know when I read it, sometime over the winter, but it's so good, and, um, wintry vibes, cozy vibes, 
kind of like, oh, that's a little creepy. That's a little weird. But then also, oh my God, you just know he's hot. Okay. You just know he is so hot, but he can't be hot because he's the primal of death, but he is. And that, that's like the worst, best thing that happens ever. Right. We love that. We love that. Um, so 10 out of 10 recommend super good. Another book that I want to recommend, I believe is something I've already talked about, but just doing it again because um, it really was super good and I think it's definitely related to time right now, but that is Defy the Night by Bridget's, oh my god, I knew I would not be able to pronounce her last name, Bridget Kem- Kemmerer, Kemmerer? I don't know. It's it's hard to say, but it's called Defy the Night, and it is 448 pages, and it is a fantasy series about a kingdom divided by corruption, and you have a prince who's trying to hold everything together. He's pretty much falling apart mentally. He's not taking care of himself, but he has to hold together his nation. His parents are dead, whatever, and then you have this girl who's on the outside who's pretty much like peasant vibes, but she's going to do anything to save her people, to save the people out in the world. So, dual perspective, it's about a kingdom falling apart, it's being attacked pretty much by a plague, but I guess it's similar to COVID, I guess you could say, technically. Um, But a kingdom being attacked by the plague, people are getting fevers and dying, but there aren't enough prevention, there's not enough vaccine type things or like medicine to help save people. So the goal of this girl is trying to distribute medicine, but to do that, she has to steal it. So kind of Robin Hood vibes. And the prince is trying to control everything politically. And so it's interesting to see the two different worlds from like what someone is actually doing like out in the field versus what actually happens politically when an issue is happening. Anyway, it says, the kingdom of Candala is on brink of disaster. Rifts between sectors have only worsened since a sickness began ravaging the land and within and within the royal palace the king holds a tenuous peace with a ruthless hand. King Harriston must thrust into power after his parents' shocking assassina- assassination, leaving the younger Prince Coric to take on the brutal role of King's Justice. The brothers have always learned to re- react mercilessly to any sign of rebellion. It's the only way to maintain order when the sickness can strike anywhere, and the only known cure, an elixir made from delicate moonflower petals, is severely limited. Out in the wilds, apothecary apprentice Tessa Cade is tired of seeing her neighbors die, their suffering ignored by the unyielding royals. Every night, she and her best friend Wes risk risk their lives to steal moonflower petals and distribute the elixir, elixir to those who need it most, but it's still not enough. As rumors spread that the cure has no longer that that the cure no longer works, and sparks of rebellion begin to flare, a particularly cruel act from the king's justice makes Tessa desperate enough to try the impossible, sneaking into the palace. But what she finds upon her arrival makes her wonder if it's even possible to fix Candala without destroying it first. So good. Was it a little predictable? I mean, yeah. If you've read a lot of fantasy books, then I definitely think it would be. If you haven't, you'll be thrown for a loop, okay? But I feel like I've read so many fantasy books where I just kind of knew what was going to happen, you know? But still, so good. I love a good kingdom. I love a kingdom in trouble, in peril, whatever you want to call it. Prince Coric, so yummy. Wes, so yummy. And what's her, what even is her name? Why don't I know her name? The girl... Tessa, good for her. So cool. Great character. Very strong. Um, I really liked it. Currently dying at the moment. I just feel so congested. The amount of times, um, I don't know. I'm trying to like talk normally, but it just feels weird and I feel so out of breath, which is not good because all I'm doing is talking, right? Um, <laughs> anyway, not feeling good, not feeling good, I want to lay down, but it's okay, we're going to be fine, because I have just a few more books, and these are my most anticipated books of 2022, first one, uh, I will literally be screaming and crying when this book comes out, because I'm so excited, and that is Book Lovers by Emily Henry, 
I'm in love with Emily Henry. Like, she can wife me up, whatever. Like, do I like girls? No. But whatever. Emily Henry, yes. Love you. Love you. Love all your books. She's an icon. She's a queen. She um wrote Beach Read. I think she also wrote People We Meet on Vacation. Not exactly sure, but I think that was her. And this book is 384 pages. And I'm honestly, I will read anything that she writes. Any of it just hits. Like, it always becomes my favorite book. So, let me just tell you what it's about. So, y'all can mark it as want to read and you can keep your, keep your eyes open in the future. Not exactly sure the date it's coming out. I want to say February or March, but I don't know for sure, though. But I'm sure you can just look it up and find that out. Nora Stevens' life is books. She's read them all and she is not that type of heroine. She's not the plucky one, not the laid-back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora is the in fact, the only people Nora is a heroine for are her clients, for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent, and her beloved and oh my god, why can I not read? Uh, and her beloved little sister Libby which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina for the month of August while Libby, when Libby begs her for a sister's trip away. With visions of a small town transformation for Nora, who is convinced she needs to become the heroine in her own story, but instead of picnics in meadows or run-ins with a handsome country doctor or or a bulging forearmed bartender, Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lastra, a bookish brooding editor from back in the city. It would be a meet cute if not for the fact that they've met many times and it's never been cute. <laughs> Yay! Love it. Love it. Oh my god. So good. Okay. If Nora knows she's not an ideal heroine, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero. But as they are thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences no editor worth their salt would allow, what they discover might just unravel unravel that carefully crafted story they've written about themselves. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I want to read it so bad. It's kind of like Beach Read, where I guess they kind of hate each other, but then they're going to be like, actually, I don't hate you. Or the hating game, when they're like, actually, you're kind of hot. I like you, you know, which so good. Love that. Love that. I seriously can't wait. Um, I did, in fact, enter because Emily Henry had a giveaway where you could get the book early. Did I win? No. Did I put my name in? Yes, absolutely. Where you could win the book early. I was like, oh my god, I want it so bad. I've never in- entered giveaways, but I did for this book because I want to read it that badly. So I'll keep you posted when it comes out. I'll probably post it on my story. I'm sure a lot of people will be posting it on their story because she's just so amazing. Love her books. Love her. So good. Okay. The next book on my most anticipated 2022 recommendations is The War of Two Queens, which I talked about, or I mentioned earlier, and that is the fourth book in the From Blood and Ash series, and um, that's by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So, if you read From Blood and Ash, you know it's about Castile Denier, who's like Prince, Prince Boy, and then Poppy, but if you haven't read From Blood and Ash, um, maybe just like mute me for the next few seconds because I don't know this might spoil stuff for you if you haven't read it if you have read this series uh get hype okay get hype if you haven't uh read it right now don't listen to me for like five minutes okay just like skip ahead and you'll be good to go okay from the desperation of golden crowns Castile Denier knows all too well that very few things are as cunning or vicious as the blood queen but no one, not even him, could have prepared for the staggering revelations. The magnitude of what the Blood Queen has done is almost unthinkable. And born of mortal flesh, nothing will stop Poppy from fe- from freeing her king and destroying everything the Blood Crown stands for. With the strength of the Primal of Life's guards behind her and the support of a woven, Poppy must convince that- Oh my god, I can never say this. At- Atlantean- Atlantean? Sure. Atlantean generals to make war her way, because there can be no retreat this time, not if she has any hope of building a future where both kingdoms can reside in peace. A great primal rises. Together, Poppy and Castile must embrace traditions old and new to safeguard those they hold dear, 
to protect those who cannot defend themselves. But war is only the beginning. Ancient primal powers have already stirred, revealing the horrors of what began eons ago. To the to end where the blood queen has begun, Poppy might have to become what she has always been prophesied to be, what she fears most, as the harbinger of death and destruction. Okay, okay, yes, Poppy, yes, queen. Um, so, so excited about this, and I'm hoping that it does relate to, why can I never rem- remember this book is hard? I hope it does relate to A Shadow in the Ember, because that's about, um the primal of death so i hope they kind of tie those two together because that would be just chef's kiss because i love that book but also then again i don't know i don't know if i want it to all be together but i feel like that would be really interesting um i think this comes out later in the year because she didn't post how many pages it's gonna have um i don't i don't know um 10 out of 10 super excited for that one i've been wanting to read that one for a long time so now everyone who hasn't read from blood and ash hi welcome back um we're done talking about that next we have kingdom of the feared which is the third book in the kingdom of the wicked series by carrie maniscalco and the description has not yet been released but i'll just talk about my love for the series for just a minute because kingdom of the wicked the first book i was like oh my god i wish this was spicy and then, and then the second book happened, and I was like, oh my god, so good. If you thought the first book was good, second book blew it out of the water. So good. Honestly, one of my favorite series, it's about the princes of hell, and um, each one is a different sin, which is really interesting, and it's like, that's their personality, or I guess whatever, and the main one that we always hear about is wrath, and wrath is so hot. Wrath is everything that we think we love he's like oh my god we're like oh my god maybe he's a good guy but then he's like i'm not a good guy and you're like oh my god but wrath you're so sweet and he's like i'm not a good guy you know but like he kind of is but then again he's just like absolutely not um kind of enemies to lovers because the main girl i love how i can never remember anyone's names the main girl is a witch and her grandma is always like don't be hanging around with all the um princes of hell and she's like oh my god i would literally never but then in the first book a tragic accident happens and she's like oh my god i need the help of a prince of hell and wrath's like hey and she's like oh my god hey you know that's my description of this series but anyway it it progresses from there as one would expect right uh 10 out of 10 recommend everybody read that read that series so then by the time kingdom of the wicked number three kingdom of the feared comes out you're ready just get ready honestly one of my favorite series from this year okay next probably the book i'm most excited about i know i've said this for every book but this one like i'm so serious and that is the second book in the crescent series oh my god what uh cannot speak today the crescent city series the second book that is called house of sky and breath by Sarah J. Mass. And I know Sarah J. Mass has a lot of, everyone's like, oh my god, Sarah J. Mass, she doesn't have uh, representation, she doesn't do any LGBTQ plus things, she doesn't have people of color, which yes, super big problem. Definitely don't agree with that, definitely think she should be more inclusive of all people. Um, But then again, I I don't know. I love her books. Okay, I hate to say it. I hate to be that girl. I know it's basic, and I kind of feel bad. Like, I feel bad because I know she's, like, she's so much controversy around her. But Crescent City was so good. <laughs> it was so good, guys. I, I'm i sorry. It was so good. This one, it's going to be 768 pages. First book, Chef's Kiss. Everyone read that. Uh, if you haven't read it, uh, don't want spoilers again skip this totally fine um i seriously truly i'm trying to remember what happened in the first book but cannot exactly remember uh so just give me a sec and it'll come to me but the second book it says bryce quinlan and hunt athler why do people name makes names so hard um (laughs) are trying to get back to normal they they may have saved crescent city but with so much upheaval in their lives lately they mostly just want a chance to relax, slow down, figure out what the future holds. 
The Asteri have kept their word so far, leaving Bryce and Hunt alone. But with rebels chipping away at the Asteri's power, the threat the rulers pose is growing. As Bryce, Hunt, and their friends get pulled into the rebels' plans, the choice becomes clear. Stay silent while others are oppressed or fight for what's right, and they've never been good at staying silent. Ooh, period. In this sexy, action-packed sequel to the number one bestseller, House of Earth and Blood, Sarah J. Mass weaves the captivating story of a world about to explode and the people who will do anything to save it. Okay, okay. Love these two characters. First book, I think it was like 800 pages. 800 pages of just complete world building, pretty much. Just building up the whole story. And then you get to the end of the book and it's like spicy, 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 spicy. You have to wait for it. But then, worth it. So good. Love it. I'm truly so excited. Like, I will probably cry a little when I get this book. Uh, I'm probably going to pre-order it <laughs> so I can get it right when it comes out because slightly obsessed. Um, But yeah, that's the last book I have for y'all for all my wintry books, all the books that um, I'm super excited for. Let me know what your most anticipated 2022 book is or which book you're most excited about, whatever even if it's not coming, even if it's not coming out this year, if it's already come out, what book are you most excited to read? What is your most anticipated 2020, 20, oh my god, wow, 2022 book? Let me know. And make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok at the Girly Girl Podcast. I post fairly often. You can see more from me throughout the week. Um, Just keep updated with me, the podcast. You can know when new episodes are coming out. And also make sure you leave a rating and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Yep, you heard me right. You can now leave ratings on Spotify. Super exciting. So if you're a Spotify user, uh, 10 out of 10, do that. I'd love to hear what you think about me, about the podcast. And thank you all for listening. If you're sick, I hope you feel better. I hope I feel better, right? Um, But have an amazing week. Uh, You're amazing. You're beautiful. And I love you so much. Bye, y'all.